The three clinical endpoints that, that I use to obtain optimal results are external temperature, internal temperature, and energy density. The internal temperature is the most accurate clinical endpoint and will allow you to achieve the best clinical results. Laser assisted liposuction is an energy de dependent procedure and the overall energy that you deliver will play an important role in the clinical outcome. The external temperature can be measured using an infrared sensor and we aim for a temperature of approximately 40 degrees. And this correlates with a subdermal temperature of 55 degrees and a temperature in the dermis of approximately 47 degrees. We've noticed that the temperature may continue to rise for a minute or so after delivering the laser assisted liposuction. External temperatures of 40, 45 to 47 degrees have been shown to cause tissue necrosis. The second endpoint, internal temperature. Internal temperature sensors are the most accurate devices for endpoint identification. The temperature allows for accurate real-time monitoring with the temperature taken 500 times per second and the temperature that's, that's given is within one degree Celsius. The temperature allows you to set the appropriate temperature we aim for a temperature between 43 to 46 degrees. It will also allow you to set the unsafe temperature and the machine will alert you to this temperature. We set it at a temperature of less than 52 degrees. This graph is from Di Bernardo and, and it shows that the temperature above 52 can cause tissue necrosis. So Steve McHolland believes that the internal temperature, temperature sensors may result in up to 25% more skin tightening than we are currently seeing. The temperature also quickens the procedure as it takes much longer to hold an external temperature monitor. The third clinical endpoint is energy density. Energy density allow I, I use what I call the hand rule in a clinical setting to determine the amount of energy density that I'm going to use. I came up with this concept by asking myself the question, what is the correct energy density needed to deliver optimal fat biases and skin tightening? Going back to some basic physics, the specific heat of fat is approximately 2.5 degrees. So this means that 2.5 joules per cubic centimetre of fat is needed to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius. The specific heat of water is approximately 4.2, and this means that 4.2 joules per cubic centimetre of water is needed to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius. The subdermal temperature with, at which fat lysis occurs is approximately 55 degrees. So given that the body temperature is 37 degrees, an 18 degree rise in temperature is needed to cause optimal fat lysis. The dermal temperature at which collagen remodeling occurs is approximately 45 to 47 degrees. So a 10 degree rise in temperature is needed to cause optimal skin tightening. So 40 to 45 joules per cubic centimetre of fat is needed to cause fat lysis. And this number is achieved by multiplying the specific heat of fat by the temperature rise needed to cause fat lysis. A similar number is achieved when you multiply the specific heat of water by the temperature rise needed to cause collagen remodeling. And you, you, you get an, an energy density of, a, of approximately 38 to 42 joules. So I roughly deliver 40 to 45 joules per cubic centimetre to cause optimal fat lysis and skin tightening. 